In many rural areas of the American West, cutting firewood in national forests is a necessary chore if you want a warm house through the winter. Our home in mountainous central Idaho was no exception. It was normal for my dad to pick me and my brothers up after school and head into the mountains for an afternoon of firewood gathering. My dad would cut down the dead trees and then saw them into chunks. My brothers and I had the tasks of rolling the wood into the trunk and loading it in. We would continue this assembly line process until we had a truckload of wood, usually before nightfall. Hot and sweaty and exhausted, we would pile into the truck cab and make our way down. At home the next day, we would unload and split the wood and stack it into neat little rows. This process repeated until we had a winter's worth of fuel for our house. Our grandma's cabin and any extra for elderly neighbors. This particular afternoon, we decided to try a different logging road on the other side of the valley. This was well outside our familiar logging area. No real reason for the change, but my dad said he wanted a change of scenery. This logging road hadn't been maintenance in some time. Large rocks and fallen branches littered the path. My brothers and I had to walk out in front of the truck, pushing rocks and wood out of the way as my dad lurched the truck up the switchbacks. Yard by yard, we slowly made our way up the mountain. That hike was physically brutal as we ascended the mountain and got further into the trees. This odd feeling started to set in. I wasn't sure if it was the exhaustion from the hike or something more. There was ex electricity in the air, like the whole mountain was buzzing at a wavelength just below my senses. In some odd way, it felt like the mountain knew we were there and it wasn't welcoming us. I wanted to say something to my brothers, but before I open my mouth, my younger brother says, Does anyone else feel like we're not welcome here? My older brother and I stopped in their tracks and looked back at him. Both of us nodded. This moment was broken by my dad honking and motioning us to continue clearing the path. Reluctantly, we pushed forward to a small clearing in the woods where we finally stopped the truck. My dad, oblivious to our apprehension, or simply choosing to ignore it, grabbed his saw and went to work as the wood was being cut and loaded. I couldn't shake this ominous feeling enveloping me like a dark shroud. I noticed my brothers were taking occasional glances over their shoulders as we worked. Everyone but my dad seemed to be on edge. The sun nestled down into the trees and twilight began to set in. As the light drained from the sky, my anxiety only intensified. It wasn't until my dad unexpectedly told us to load up that a wave of relief flooded over me. I could see the tension in my brothers melt away as well. The truck wasn't fully loaded. An oddity. Getting a half load was a waste according to my dad. We could, would sometimes work in the dark just to make sure the truck was full, but tonight he seemed eager to head home with everything loaded. We started down the road, although dead tired, everyone seemed to be in a much lighter mood. We were chatting and cracking jokes while trying to blow off steam from the afternoon. We, we were almost out of the tree line and into the valley desert going down the switchbacks. You want to be careful, especially with a load, even if it was half. A brown blur jumped up from the downslope side of the switchback. Shit was the only word that came out of my dad's mouth as he slammed on the brakes. Loaded with wood and traveling downhill, there was no way to avoid smashing into the blur. The truck finally ground to a standstill. The four of us peered through the windshield, nobody saying a word. Illuminated in the glow of our headlights was a crumpled up body of a deer. Grumbling and cursing the deer's existence, my dad exited the truck to investigate. Doing as they were told, my brother stayed put in the truck. I didn't listen, following close behind my dad. The truck was fine. We hadn't been traveling fast when we smacked the deer. Just some hair and blood in the grail guard. Hitting a deer wasn't that unusual. The mountains were full of them. What was unusual was that the deer dropped so quickly. At faster speeds, deer could still be upright and sprinting as their last burst of an adrenaline. This one fell over like a ragdoll. Before even approaching the carcass, a deep, foul smell hit us. Deer smell bad when they're alive, but this one was on a whole other level. It was the smell of decay and rot. My stomach began to turn as we got closer. My nostrils were burning. 
Coming up to the deer, it was clearly dead, really, really dead. The stench was so overwhelming, my eyes were watering, the body was a true horror scene. The deer's eyes were gone, replaced with sunken hollow holes as if overcompensating for their absence. The tongue was swollen and black as coal, it could not be contained and hung, hung out the side of its mouth. The un underbelly was split open and trails and ophils spilled into the dirt. In the dim headlights it looked as though the deer's fur and viscera were moving, wiggling almost. Holding my breath, I bent down for a closer look and my heart stopped. The deer, inside and out, was covered in maggots. It was dead alright, but our truck didn't kill it. Clearly it had been dead for days if not weeks. I backed away, wrenching. The electric anxiety came screaming back. My dad was always the quiet stoic type. But right now, even in the dim headlights of the truck, I could see the abject horror in his face. His gaze wasn't on the deer, but focused down the mountain. Poorly masking the fear in his voice, he told me firmly to walk back to the truck and get in. I obeyed without objection as I grabbed the door handle. A loud shriek came out from the trees. Branches were shattering and breaking. Something was heading up the slope towards us. I slammed my door closed just as my dad reached the truck before his door was shut. He pressed on the accelerator. The truck launched forward, sending us down over the deer carcass and racing downhill. With me and my brothers yelling, it was hard to tell if the shrieking was following us. Our truck popped out of the tree line and into the desert sagebush. Once out of the woods, everything quieted down. We were left with only the rumble of the engine and wind through the half-open windows. Pulling into the, our property, the truck came to a stop. We sat in silence. No one moved to leave the truck. Everyone started talking at once. We all had questions like what the hell was screaming? How does a dead deer jump uphill in front of a truck? There was no way the truck killed it. Dad just shook his head and motioned for us to quiet down. That deer was dead when we hit it. It didn't jump out in front of us. It was thrown at us, my dad said. We stared at him. He explained that all day up on the mountain. He felt uneasy, not wanting us to worry. He kept it to himself. He described it like walking into a stranger's living room while they were upstairs asleep. That feeling never left him. And as twilight came, he happened to catch a shadow in the corner of his eye, not far into the woods, and saw figures moving from tree to tree. He couldn't focus on them long enough for a good look before they dodged behind the trees. His stomach dropped. Working hard to keep his composure, he hurried us into the truck to leave. It was after hitting the deer and discovering it was long dead that my dad pieced together what was happening. Something threw that deer at us to get, get us to stop. Before the shrieking began, he could hear something moving in the darkness beyond the road. It was a trap. Running back to the truck could have started an ambush or triggered a prey drive. So we walked back to the truck. The second we were inside, he drove that truck downhill with no intention of stopping for anyone or anything. That feeling of electricity didn't dis disappear until we hit the county highway. My brothers and I never saw anything as we drove away, but those screams from the forest will never leave my mind. We didn't gather firewood for the rest of the season. For the first time in his life, my dad just bought what we needed, and although we started to gather wood again next season, we've never been, not been back up that particular mountain. The Forest Service has permanently closed and reclaimed that road. The only way back up into those woods is a long hike, and one I'm sure as shit not taking ever again. Whatever was on that mountain, whatever threw that deer carcass at us, whatever chased us out of the woods, it did not want us there. It wanted us gone, or worse.